this is a roll of Ektar 100 and that is Picture Perfect Photo Labs. I want to get this roll developed here. Let's do this. Yes, that's right. I'm back at Picture Perfect and I'm going to be picking up my color prints from the Zorky 1E. Let's go in and do this. Here is the thumbnail sheet and it looks like all of the pictures, yes, all of the pictures look like they came out pretty good. So the last time we took a look at the Zorky 1E, I was walking around the streets of Central Avenue near Knob Hill taking photos with a roll of Ektar 100. This isn't the roll, this is just the box top with the uh, TT Artisan's light meter attached to the the camera of course and uh, so I finished that video uploaded it but didn't show you the results from the pictures so I thought it would be a fun time to just go through some of these pictures and talk a little bit about them stay tuned so it was on a Tuesday morning when I went over to my friend Ethan's uh, shop with this camera and the roll of Ektar, but I hadn't loaded the Ektar yet. So I loaded the Ektar while I was at his shop. So the very first frame I got was actually one of those exposures you do when you're loading the film. And I thought it was actually kind of an interesting abstract shot. It was very unexpected, but kind of cool. But then the next two shots were just practice shots that I was taking indoors in his shop under subdued lighting and just keeping in mind this is 100 ISO film. Uh, not too bad of exposure for handheld I thought. Then I took another picture uh, while I was at his shop. This was of Ethan in the shade uh, outside and then um, I wasted another shot <laughs> with taking a picture of my hat uh, straddled atop a camera tripod in his shop. Not too bad. Then uh, I started using the camera on subsequent days during my strolls around my neighborhood. And I'm trying to get more walking in just for health reasons. And it's a good opportunity to take a camera with you. Also knowing that you're shooting film and it's color film so it's a little bit pricier to buy and to process. You don't want to just blast away like you would with a digital point and shoot. So uh, I did a few test shots here like these two here. This red car and the white truck and then this other shot of the uh, telephone pole in the foreground of the red car in the background. This was probably taken actually in the late afternoon light as it looks to me. Walking around the neighborhoods, right, every day you take a similar kind of a route and you start to see the same kinds of shots or the same kinds of scenes over and over again. So it becomes difficult to really find original things. But there's a few things that stand out like these little homes with this one with the red chair and the front. Um, this next one is actually in our front courtyard. This is the, some of the flowers that my wife has planted. And then this next one here was just this interesting delivery truck in the neighborhood. I just thought the color was interesting. Then we have this shot down the street from us on our street. This older gentleman has this interesting little wooden bench out on the corner of his front yard that looks rather interesting. Um, a couple more shots in more subdued lighting. I like this one here with the tree trunks. And as you're walking around the neighborhood, of course, you come across a little interesting signs and things in people's yards. I thought this was kind of a typical Americana kind of a picture. Walking a little further up from my neighborhood, there's a house with this kind of flamingo yard ornament in their yard. I'm also a real sucker for chairs. Anytime I see a chair, it represents to me kind of like a, an, a missing person. There's an emptiness there. So this literal empty chair was sitting out on the sidewalk by someone's driveway and I kind of like the juxtaposition of it with this large red truck in the background. And then this uh, yard has a nice wooden ladder and a little tree house up in the tree which is kind of interesting. So these were all like neighborhood shots around my neighborhood taken over the course of probably a week or two. And then uh, the rest of the role, most of the rest of the role was the day that I shot part four of this series and we'll go through those. So this first shot was of the condos in East Knob Hill. The next several shots were of the graffiti mural in the alley. 
So there's this one with the chain link fence that was kind of shooting over and beyond the chain link fence. Then this one was the really colorful uh, one along the alley on the north of a little strip mall. And it's an interesting character there. And then this third one, I kind of really like this near and far kind of effect. And you can see the tail end of this old Cadillac sticking out from behind the building. I really like this shot here because I know that this empty lot where it's advertising new luxury rentals is the site of what used to be the Aztec Motel, which was one of my favorite subjects to photograph. But this is kind of like a grungy, rundown strip of land with a kind of a convenience store next to it. But new luxury rentals, yes. Well, we'll see how much luxury there is. Uh, so the next three images here, there I was parked uh, nearby and I saw this gentleman painting the side of a building. I took three shots of him. Wasn't really sure which one I liked the best. Uh, all three of them have interesting poses. But this third one here is an interesting composition because it includes more than just the white wall. There's a little bit more uh, variation in it. So that was in East Knob Hill, uh, Central Avenue. Uh, the next few shots are from McDuffie Park, which is Hidden Park. Uh, this here is in an alleyway on the side of a house leading into the park. And the owners of this house have mounted what used to be a drinking fountain on the side of their garage for what used to be for people to use. And apparently the faucet and spigot and all that are no longer installed, but the drinking fountain porcelain is still there, which I think is really cool. And then this next shot, this um, telephone pole always has interesting flyers and stuff attached to it. This is right at the same entrance to the park. And I really like this colorful piece of artwork that was advertising some event. Uh, then the next few shots are just the backyards of people's houses that adjoin uh, border on the park. So here is a classic kind of a ranch home with an American flag flapping in the breeze. And then this next shot here is really kind of a wonderful picture. I gave the lady a lot of space. She was walking her little dog and the backyard of this house is just like a wire, chicken wire fencing. And so she's looking and talking at this big white dog in the backyard. I'm assuming the dog really loves having park people come over and talk to him and maybe pet him through the fencing. But I just thought it was a great kind of example of Americana and suburbia right here and dog walkers in the park. Uh, this mural, this is like these two shots here, that someone's painted a mural on the park side of this structure and I thought it was kind of interesting. And then back uh, a few days later to my neighborhood and I shot a few more pictures. There's this one here, a little colorful ornament in the front yard of this house. And then this is one of these neighborhood book exchange boxes that people have. It looks like I missed the focus on this one and I'm focused in the background, which is unfortunate. This Ford 100 pickup truck has been in a, a neighboring street for a long time and it's always uh, attractive to me when I walk down because of the patina of rust on it and apparently it's still running. And finally this shot here of a couple pickup trucks which is kind of interesting. I like this. And then finally a, an out of focused unfocused shot. I don't think it was motion blur. I must have not focused right. This uh, is this young lady is my granddaughter. She was over at our house so Anyways, I thought overall that these pictures came out pretty good. I missed focus on a few of them. That's certainly my error, not the cameras. I think the rangefinder focusing is, is pretty accurate. You know, overall, I was kind of happy with this color film in terms of the results I get. Certainly, it's a challenge shooting these kind of pictures in a suburban neighborhood when you're making the same walk around the same streets with the same houses and yards and cars. I did see some compositions. I didn't actually photograph them, but I did see some ideas for when you're walking down a sidewalk and there's some shrubs next to a driveway and then you have the back end of a car sticking out from behind the shrub, a block in the sidewalk. I saw a lot of those kinds of similar compositions and I thought that might make an interesting kind of a little study in 
suburban architecture, suburban automobiles interacting with the pedestrians on the sidewalk. Anyway, so it's a challenge to try to find good subject matter in these kind of settings. But it is one thing that we all need to do to become better photographers is learn to shoot close to home. Anyways, this uh, camera has proven to be quite useful in these kinds of settings. Color film, however, is expensive. Getting it processed is expensive. Black and white, especially if you process it yourself, certainly remains a viable alternative. Well, I have enjoyed the Zorky 1E so far and I'll continue to use it. And oh, by the way, I was typing up some notes to myself on a, on a manual typewriter about this camera, and I was typing it as Zorky 1E, but in a manual typewriter, you don't have the number 1 in the older style keyboards. You have to use a lowercase l. And so it ended up looking like Zorky LE, which then immediately got me thinking, Le Zorky. I know it's Russian, not French, but I, I think I'm going to call this Le Zorky, not Zorky 1E, just for the fun of it. We may have another episode in the future, one of these days, but if you have any questions at all about these early Soviet Leica copy rangefinders, drop a note down below. Let's talk about it. And I wish you the very best. Stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.